Zoro's three sword style isn't real. And the animators lied to us. I mean, Zoro is the literal right hand of the future Pirate King and the animators do him so dirty. We literally never see him actually use all three swords effectively in the show. Like every time he puts that third sword in his mouth, he just strikes a pose, makes with flashes of an attack and then followed by yet another pose. Like I get it, nobody has that kind of jaw strength to really make it effective in real life. And to be honest, I'm totally okay with looking past that. But at least put in the effort to make it at least look real enough to, to work in real life, not face Zoro's swords literally through his arms to make it look somewhat okay. Yes, they literally face his swords through his arms. It's honestly just cheating. So according to the show's animators, it's not possible, but all that changes now because I have officially made Zoro's three sword style real and here is how I did it. What's up guys, it's the only ninja wearing aviators and a superhero hat and welcome to the modern ninja. And before we jump into it, I just want to define exactly what I mean by three sword style being real. Because I know a ton of you martial artists, keyboard warriors are already typing in the comments about how that wouldn't be effective. And I know, I agree with you, it's not effective. I don't think it's an effective way to fight in real life at all. However, before recently, I didn't even think it was possible to simulate correctly. And when I say it's real, I mean it's fine possible to perform in real life like in like physical earth like without using any CGI or special effects so yes you're correct no one in their right mind would ever fight someone with a sword in their mouth but someone like you know a movie or a Netflix TV show might be able to use this wink wink nudge nudge Netflix to make a realistic version of Zoro's three sword style. Now that we got that out of the way, in order to recreate three sword style, you first have to master single and double swords. Like I'm serious, you have to have a mastery understanding of how exactly to use both types of sword play with single and double. It really comes down to just building that muscle memory so you can do those things without really thinking about it. Like you have to know exactly how it all works, the length of your blade, the balance of your sword, the weight, the, the blade alignment, the body mechanics, and so much more has to be practically automated. And if you want me to do a full in-depth video on how to master single and double sword, I totally can. But because so much actually goes into it, we would be literally here for hours in this video. And this video is long enough, so I don't want to do that now. So we're going to just assume that you either already know all of this, have taken my private Zoom lessons, plug, plug, and I've been able to learn it, or just don't care. And then we have to start preparing our body for the third sword. You're going to need a strong jaw and strong neck muscles. For the jaw, I suggest chewing gum. And honestly, I suggest chewing a lot of it. That's honestly the best way I can think of to work on your jaw strength. But for your neck muscles, there's a lot more options. You start by laying on your back with your feet flat on the ground and then rock all your weight towards your head and lift your back off of the ground. Then walk circles around your head. This will be challenging at first, but will develop very strong neck and shoulder muscles. Now to actually add in the third sword, you're going to first need to find a sword that fits these descriptions and these qualifications. First, it has to be light enough to actually be carried in your jaw. We aren't in the One Piece world and don't have superhuman strength as a baseline. So I suggest starting with a foam sword like those nerve swords that you see back in the early 2000s. They're super light and soft so you can bite into them without hurting your teeth or putting too much strain on your jaw. They also very easily absorb vibrations and so if you mess up early on, it won't like rattle your teeth. But I know all of you want to get to like, you know, a metal sword type. So we'll build to that by going to PVC or a wooden sword. This is a little bit heavier and allows you to increase the difficulty little by little until you get to your tricking sword. These tricking swords are going to be the only metal sword that I can imagine actually working out well. And they are made from aircraft aluminum and designed to be you know, used in dangerous stunts, just like this one, I guess. They're actually the swords I use for most of my videos that you see me do on this channel. I've done many reviews on them before, but if you want one, there's a link down in the description with a discount code to get 10% off your checkout if you wanna check the description down below or the corners, you know how it works. The second important factor to consider is the grip. We are gonna be sinking our teeth into this handle, so we need to be very careful about what type of grip we use, especially because we're already freaking out every dentist watching this right now. Well. 
actually, maybe we're just having them clear their calendars for new clients. Honestly, who knows? But what I found to work best is a soft foam, something like tennis grip. It will allow you to get the best hold on your sword, in my opinion. Now, with grip, it does have a lot of opinions and preferences, and yours might be different than mine, but my main goal is that you don't want it sliding around while it's in your mouth. Like you really, really don't want it to move positions. You want it to be in place solidly. It will cause you to mess up when you're doing the full three sword style and spoiler alert, mess ups hurt a lot. And of course, for obvious reasons, don't be dumb and try to use a sharp blade of any type. That's asking to maim yourself or worse. Like your neck is literally right there. So please be safe. Now that we have our third sword, how exactly do we hold it? In your mouth, obviously. Hey, phrasing! <laughs> but to be a little bit more specific, we want the blade facing forward and on your non-dominant side. So if you're right-handed like I am, the blade will be on your left side. This actually took me a while to figure out which side was better because the whole process of trial and error is a challenge when it hurts when you mess up. And because I like spinning in my combos and figuring out which direction was the best way to spin with the sword in your mouth was an experience to say the least. But I ended up with prioritizing and maneuvering for being the main factor for deciding which side the blade sits on. When you start with your two swords, you'll need to maneuver around your third blade very often. And for me, the more dominant hand is used way more for challenging you know, maneuvers than the left hand is. And so since I don't have to move my hand as much, I want the blade on that side. Then we get to the fun stuff, the actual three sword style. For this video, I'm going to assume you're right-handed and the blade is on your left side. So if you wanna switch it for yourself, if you're a lefty, that's fine. First, you're gonna have to learn the two different base types of moves with your third sword. Now, there are two types of moves, the slashes and the stabs, and the slashes also double as blocks. But your stab is hitting the top of the blade into your opponent, you know, like a stab. Swinging your head to the left makes your base stab. And you can modify this stab by the different angles your head is at. Tilting your head to the right creates an upward stab, and tilting your head to the left creates a downward stab. And slashes will be cuts with the blade of the sword instead. You can do the base slash by sharply turning your head to the right, and slightly pulling back to enhance the cut. And then tilting your head to the right makes your slash downward, and tilting your head to the left makes your slash upward. And that, for the most part, is pretty straightforward, honestly. It didn't take me long to figure all that out once I had the sword in my mouth. However, using all three blades at the same time was the challenge. I tried to use a couple different methods to make sure my blade didn't, you know, clash by mistake and using various spins and figure eights and it honestly didn't work at first. But then I made a realization that made all of it possible. I realized that you needed to hit the like and subscribe button. <laughs> Not really, but I feel like that was a pretty good way to bring it up. So, uh, go on. But for real, I realized that I needed to think and move on three separate spatial planes. And it's easiest to think of like this. When using three sword style, there are also three planes of existence that your blades can be in at any given time. The first is in front of your face, basically everything from your nose going forward. The second is in line with your ear, everything in between your nose and the back of your head going in every direction. And the third is everything behind your head. And to be successful at three sword style, you have to follow this rule. Only one sword can be in line with your ear for any long period of time. And that sword is the third sword. It's sitting in your mouth stationary, so it can't enter the first or third plane. And with your other two swords, they can share a plane or each be on different planes, but never spending significant time in the second plane unless passing through. And after figuring that out, I was finally able to make my first successful three sword combo. I was able to do tosses as long as they stayed in their plane and I could spin and do twists and turns with my body provided that my focus was where my head was facing. And if I ever wanted to do any horizontal type tosses like a box cutter, all I'd have to do was make sure that it was far enough away from me or above me so I could manage to not have it intersect with the planes. And as I practiced, I found new rules and principles to follow. 
like how your left hand doesn't have full rotation when your right hand does. So my left arm had to loosely follow a U shape when passing from my third plane to my first plane. Always remembering to go underneath the sword. There are also some things that I found to make it significantly easier to pair and combo strikes together. And for example, doing a slash with my third sword makes my third plane a lot wider for any strikes with my left hand. And doing stabs makes my first plane even bigger for tricks with my right hand. Yes, I know, all this is very complicated and I feel like I'm describing rocket science to you guys. But hopefully it makes just enough sense so that you guys are tracking and hopefully with enough practice, it will become a lot more natural for me. And when it becomes more natural to me, I will get even better and make even more discoveries about creating the three sword style. Maybe even teach it to other people. I don't know, maybe that'll work. But regardless, I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you want to see more Zoro and three sword style, make sure to, you know, follow the channel and maybe even hit the notification bell so you don't miss anything. But until next time, my name's DJ Moore. This is The Modern Ninja, and I'm out. If you like this video, check out this one about Black Leg Sanji or this other one about Soul King Brook. Either way, I'll see you guys in the next one.